Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. Today we're going to talk about something that does go for some good money. We're going to talk about vintage board games, or board games in general. Let's hop over there right now and show you some. Now here we are with board games. Now this is the holy grail of board games. This is what I would always hope to find, Dark Tower. Now I played this as a child. It's a big elaborate setup for this. It's a big box well collected this person actually repairs them and repaired hundreds of these and sold them online most people when they're not working will still buy these it's well collected as i said this is one of the neatest games out there if i remember i had a video or something that played with it also 450 dollars, and this gentleman offers a warranty for this that is how popular this is dom primetime treasure hunters probably would remember this one as well we both grew up in the same time frame we talk about this kind of stuff really good one here now this is fireball island another well collected one i've run into this one a few times in the past it's been a long time Games like this used to be what dominated the market. Nowadays, it's all like role-playing, Kickstarter versions, uh, special editions, and things like that. You have to go 20 pages in almost to find something like this these days in comp searches. But this is just a really good one here. Many people won't think much of it. Even if it's missing parts and pieces, I will still always buy this one here. Now here's Hero Quest, another one of those lines that almost all of them sell. This person has add-ons and other ones with it. Lots of mini figures. I run into these figures. Most people aren't familiar with what game they go to. Parts and pieces always sell for us. So even if they're not complete, you can sell the figures and the pieces for some nice money. This one went for almost 560 bucks. Now this is Hero Quest, another one. This is advanced versions of it. Now this one goes for some insane amounts of money. This is fairly uh, scarce. It's 10 complete versions of this basically. A nice assortment across the board. This is probably most of them that you would want. So you'd have it all in one big collection here. $3,500 on this one. This would be about the top of the line and somebody really has some money invested into this, even buying a new. Now here's another one for Dom, Primetime Treasure Hunter. He-Man, Masters of the Universe. This is the 3D version. Now there's another one that pops up that I've seen once or twice before. This is the one you're going to find most often. Not worth a fortune. 60 bucks. If it's complete, it could go for a little better in a sealed state, but still a nice game. Well collected. People love the artwork on these. Nice painted cover. Now here's It from the Pit. This is a Milton Bradley from the 90s. I've only seen one or two of these in my life. The arm comes out or something, if I'm not mistaken on this. Or Yeah, it does. That's exactly what it is. Well collected. A lot of people liked this one. All these odd ones that move and are mechanical are just the bomb in my book. I love these sort of games. 140 bucks on this one. Resident Evil. Now, this is what I'm talking about. This is what's dominated most of the sales on eBay for board games. The older and vintage ones, the prices have steadily declined. Back in the day, you could sell Star Wars board games from the 70s for two or three hundred dollars. Nowadays, it's just not as much going for them. Uh, there are just so many of them out there. Many have turned up with the internet. These are now where, where the high dollar board games go now. This one comes with figures. Now, somebody's painted these. They would have come unpainted, or I'm sure you could buy them painted as well. Many different versions of this out there. I've seen two or three myself. Now, Battlestar Galactica, there's four basic versions, expansion sets of these. They weren't printed in mass quantity. They weren't sure if a bunch of people would buy this or how well it would sell. They're all out of print now. So you see any of the Battlestar Galactica ones, we always make good money on stuff like this. Almost $600, as you can see, for these. And these are fairly new, as you would know. It's the new TV series. Now, this is one where I see people walk by this one. Situation Leadership. It's the one-minute manager. I played this way back in the day at a retreat for a business meeting. These always go for some good money. Now, this is higher than I usually see them. Two, three hundred dollars is on average on these. A lot of people will pass them by just thinking they're junk because of this subject matter. Not the case. A lot of these leadership boards go for some good money also. Now, here's a Decisions Games. This is a war game by the Decisions Games company they made a bunch of different ones this is a revised edition war in europe is the most popular version of this this one looks to be sealed if i'm not mistaken or maybe not necessarily the box is really glossy either way 495 dollars unpunched meaning the little pieces the playing pieces are made out of cardboard and you'd have to unpunch them this is more along the lines of like an avalon hill or a 3m bookshelf game if you know what that is we'll show you a few of those as well 
Here's another vintage. This again is a bookshelf style from SPI. Now these were made in limited quantity. Not a lot of people played these. A lot of people even who were around back in the 70s and 80s don't even know what these are. Just like uh, Avalon Hill Games. That's basically what this is. 475 bucks. Now Stratomatic. Any of these Stratomatic, and I'll show you a bunch of them. This is the original from 62, $330. Here's one from 69 for football, $299. Here's another one, 1976. They have some extra pieces from the 75 version. They made these throughout the year, so any of these I sell for decent money, $237. And even the new one, this is mostly what you will find is this version here. I run into more of these than any other ones. This one went for $275. So those lines in general sell very well. And there's tons of them out there. Another range of board games that I always look for. I love the vintage TV, sci-fi. Uh, Dom and I talk about stuff like this and exchange photos a lot. These types of things uh, really get me excited when I see them. Even if they're not worth a ton of money, just because of the artwork and the nostalgia, the shows and TV things and movies that they're tied to, I really enjoy seeing these sorts of things. Double Dragon from the video game. It was also a TV series, very short-lived TV series, $299. Now, this one's sealed, so you can't get much better than that. Now, here's an Avalon Hill, a newer one. Avalon Hill is still around. Now, this one was released in a semi-limited uh, quantity. The movie just flooded the market with toys and things. This is one of the few that has some good value to it still. $239 on this one. And the box face is pushed in as well. So it's not a perfectly mint version of this. Lots of accessories and things, figures. It reminds me of a Risk game, so to speak. If you see it, you'll know what I mean. Lots of little pieces and figures to move around. Banana Split's another vintage one. Musical group, TV series. I think they made a movie. There's records. The whole works. $228 on this one. 14 bids. Really nice one. I run into Banana Split stuff. Quite often it all sells. Magazines, whatever they're on, it usually sells. They're still a good group of people that like them. They made a new horror movie using these characters also. So might be something to look into as a future increase in price area to invest in. Ticket to Ride, this is a 10th anniversary. There's other versions of this. Markle, the train manufacturer, makes tin trains from Germany, has an edition of this that sells for some good money, too. The original isn't worth as much as this 10th anniversary, at least the ones that I have run into. Now, here's another one of the Avalon-style board games with pieces and cards and a playing board just like you'd see with most games. These go for some good money. Don't think you're not going to find some of these because they are out there. 80s and 90s games like this do go for some good money. $225. Another Avalon Hill, The Longest Day. Now, there's first, second, third editions and printings on many of these because they printed them in limited quantity. If they sold, then they ramped it up and printed a second printing on a lot of these. The second printing or the first printing on either one of these editions goes for some good money. The Longest Day was a movie. If you haven't seen it, it was actually a pretty good movie. I saw it with my father. Well, well remembered this one here. Instantly knew this one the second I saw. Dune, here's another one. Bookcase, Avalon. It's literally in a box that would slide into a bookcase. It's the same size as, it's, say, a big book. This is from 1979. It is complete. 225, as I said. Dawn of the Dead, another one. Uh, SPI Simulations Productions, Inc. SPI, most people just call them. It says SPI on the front of the box. They're all similar to the Avalon Hill, the bookcase editions. You pop out little tiny pieces of cardboard for your playing pieces and markers. They come with dice, just a normal type of thing you would find in the 70s, 80s, even into the 90s still. $205. Now, this is from Transogram. Most Transogram items aren't worth much at all. So if you see that name and it's not something character or TV related, pass it by. This is Space Angel. It's a Japanese... Uh, cartoon animated series. It wasn't uh, on for very long, but they do sell for some good money. One of the few by Transogram that I would buy. $200 on this one. Frankenstein, 1963. There's two or three versions of this one also. $142. The board games just aren't well collected anymore. They take up space. You can't find missing pieces to them, mostly, especially games like this. You have to substitute for some of these, so... Still a nice assortment here. This one's a really nice one. I love the graphics. This will just sit on a shelf for a display piece. $142. Dukes of Hazard. 
Uh, this is one that's gotten hard to find in any condition from what I've seen. A lot of these board games are just trash. People don't think they're worth much money. Complete excellent condition. They do go for some decent money. This is Ideal 2, which was a lower budget game company. This board game is sealed, if I'm not mistaken, as well. So a nice one here at the price for $180. Monopoly. Now, this specific edition is worth some money. There are some other ones. The Futurama one I always look for, too. There's a gold bender in there that's worth a couple hundred bucks if you find it. Uh, some of the special figures go and, and really uh, up the price on some of these because they were randomly inserted uh, like lots. It was a chance that you would get it or not. This one always sells, though. South Park is still very, very popular. Out of print for years. You run into these. I've almost always found these still sealed. People just don't think they're worth money. I paid five bucks for one not too long ago. Sealed, too. Robin Hood. Now, age on a game isn't a factor anymore. Most people don't collect these earlier games. It's just a character, not necessarily from a movie. It's from 1938, and it still only went for 150 bucks. So don't worry about the age on a lot of these sorts of things. The dating game, this one's sealed, brand new, 525 bucks. You can't go wrong on a sealed vintage board game. Barnabas Collins, Dark Shadows. I've had this one once in my life. Not complete like this, but still they'll go. People just want the box. 150 bucks on this one. Legend of Zelda, Nintendo. Any of the Nintendo games I buy, any video game one I buy, as long as it's complete. Even the parts and pieces in these can sell for some good money. 150 bucks on this one from 1988. Haunted Mansion, this is the holy grail of Disney board games. I have never seen one of these complete. I've only found the cards that were unpunched. Other than that, I've never even touched anything from this set. 575 bucks. It's a square box. It's a tall box. Lots of parts and pieces to put together as long as they're there and it has the base to it. Now here's crossbows and catapults. Even the individual pieces on these I can still get some money for. 150 bucks on this one. Nice, interesting. Goes into a whole line of these. Now here's the real Ghostbusters. This one, yeah, this one's sealed as well. Brand new. Even unsealed, you'd still get, say, 75 to 100 bucks on this one. Dom probably remembers this game as well. Battlemaster. This is along the lines of crossbows and catapults as well. It leads into Axis and Allies. Now, there's like seven or eight different versions of this board game. Any of them will sell for some parts, if nothing else. If I get one of these and it's missing pieces, I'll just sell it for parts. Scrap the box and sell the ships and planes and things that come with it. 172 bucks. This is a sealed one. The Guadalcanal one is fairly scarce. Broadsides and boarding parties, just along the lines of the other ones we just talked about. Crossbows and catapults. It's basically a pirate version of that same thing. 300 bucks. Now here's some of the newer style ones, War of the Rings. Any of these go for like a thousand bucks. This goes into the Kickstarter and the whole works. I don't find them. That's why I don't have much of them in here. Franklin Mint's another one. They make the Monopoly version. There's several of these extra special characters. It's a wood board. Any of these go for at least four or five hundred dollars. This one's extra nice. It has the original packaging, seven hundred and thirty-nine dollars. And a game I played, StarCraft. This is the expansion for Brood Wars. Most of these StarCraft board games go for at least, say, 75 to 100. This one is the top of the line at 350. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.